In the oil and gas industry, to simulate a subsea system, physical parameters are taken into consideration that are not relevant to most other industrial and mobile hydraulic systems. In Automation Studio, we can simulate the depth and location for each component or function at the sea level, the sea floor, and intermediate levels. We can see the ambient condition, including pressure and temperature, as well as the fluid properties at each level of depth. To illustrate this, we have designed this simplified circuit in a subsea system. The boat represents the offshore oil pumping system, and the oil is represented by this black area at the bottom of the screen. In Automation Studio, you can adjust depth according to your needs. For this example, we have set the sea level at 0 meters and the floor level at 2500 meters. We configure the hydraulic components located above sea level are surrounded by atmospheric pressure. The components above this seafloor level are surrounded by hydrostatic pressure that exists at this depth of 2500 meters. Of course, in Automation Studio, we can build more systems between the sea level and the seafloor level. So let's model pressure in Automation Studio. At this depth under the sea level, pressure affects components that have to exhaust hydraulic fluid. It is important to represent this for components that have mobile parts like cylinders or ones that move mechanical components. Since hydrostatic pressure pushes on these actuators, the ambient pressure is an important element. To figure depth, we use what we call the customized reservoir. You can specify the height, which will correspond and be equal to the depth level under the sea. In this example, I chose an initial height of 2,500 meters, which represents the sea floor. As the builder, you can install as many ports as you like. When you create a port, you can specify its elevation as well as how many liters of volume of fluid exist at this port level. Here, I have already configured six ports to illustrate the different pressure levels. During simulation, you will be able to see the different hydrostatic pressures being built. The simulation and pressure depend on the fluid in the circuit. In this case, we are using water. There are 500 meters between each port. To illustrate this, we have set the color of the line according to the level of pressure. This way, you can actually see the difference and, of course, the value of the pressure is indicated as well. Components with exhaust will be connected to one of these ports. At the seafloor level, I used this port. These hyperlinks are shortcuts to where I linked this line. This way, you don't have to draw all the lines. Exhaust from the cylinder is going this way. These exhausts are connected to this component here. There is hydrostatic pressure acting on the side of the valve, which tells us there is hydrostatic pressure on the rod here. All these lines are connected to this port. Now at the surface, we connect the exhausts to the port. These ports are available in Automation Studio, such as the pressure release valve for the maximum pressure. It is already connected to the atmospheric reservoir. At the sea level, we don't have to connect to these ports. Between the sea level and the sea floor, we have to send flow and fluid to the subsea system. In order to achieve this, We've simplified the pump system here with an electrical motor to drive the pump. This pump has already filled the system. We can see the pressure that is built at this level, 242 bar, plus the hydrostatic pressure we've reached here, 484 bar. You can see that this pressure is equal to the pressure here because they are connected. This is the case everywhere in the circuit. In order to model the flow from the sea level to the sea floor in Automation Studio, we use a hydrostatic line. This is because unlike other mobile systems, where the maximum level is something like 10 meters, we need to account for pressure which requires additional calculations. To make this a hydrostatic line, go to Properties. When I change this value to False, I can no longer edit or give value to the elevation. 
It's not taken into account by the simulator with this model. Let's make this value true. Now I am able to change the elevation of the line. Of course, the elevation has to be at least the value of the length. Now that we have the ambient condition based on the pressure, let's find the ambient condition based on the oil. In Automation Studio, we have the ISO standard installation and circuit. We can consider this system as one installation in which we have two circuits, one located at sea level and one located at the sea floor. Each circuit has a different ambient condition, so to find it, open Project Properties, and choose Hydraulic Installation. Here I have two circuits that I've created called VOP system. For the circuit located at the sea level, I will select an ambient temperature of 15 degrees and the same temperature for the initial fluid. For the second circuit of the VOP system, described as the seafloor level, we can select a much lower ambient and initial temperature. The atmospheric pressure remains the same. With two installation circuits, we need to assign each component to a specific circuit. Choose this component that belongs to installation circuit 1 for which the ambient temperature is 15 degrees and the second one is 5 degrees. Select all the components that are located at this level and specify that they belong to the second installation. So now we have different initial conditions for each component. In Automation Studio, the pressure is relative to the atmospheric pressure. For example, 242 bar means it is 242 bar above the atmospheric pressure. If we want to measure relative pressure related to the hydrostatic pressure, we need to use differential measuring instruments. We can also use components from the library, but for validation, it's better to use dynamic measuring instruments. For example, I can put a dynamic measuring instrument here to measure the differential pressure between these two ports. You can measure pressure anywhere in the circuit. Since subsea systems are located at different depths, compensated sequence valves are used. This valve is affected by the exhaust pressure. For example, we have a differential pressure of 200 bar, and this valve opens at this pressure. The fact that the valve remains open at 194 bar is due to its deadband. You can adjust performance based on the working pressure to determine compensation. You can use accumulator, you can use gas accumulator, mass accumulator, you can also use a cylinder to adjust the effort and make it variable. Hydrostatic pressure is acting on the area of this rod here. If you compare the rod side area to the piston side area, you can see about 20 square meters at the surface, which at this level means there are 240 bar at this area. Using the driving force during extension and retraction will make your cylinder move as soon as the ports are not locked. In the simulation, we see how it works in Automation Studio. While we didn't use the butterfly valve, this is a common valve used in the subsea system. The objective is to open and close those valves. This is to illustrate that Automation Studio is not only an analytic tool, but can also be used as a training and documentation tool.